discuss the anatomy for resonance. So resonators react to the sound produced somewhere else. We have the generator, the lungs, providing the air that flows through the vocal folds as they're closed. As the voice or sound is bounced through the uh, structures of the uh, supraglottic area of the larynx, the, or the area above the vocal folds, the pharynx, the oral cavity, and the nasal cavity, those structures vibrate, modifying that sound as it passes through. We have to have a balance of our oral and nasal resonance and the airflow to have correct production of speech sounds or phonemes. So we have, again, the generator, the lungs, the vibrator, the vocal folds, and the resonators, the larynx, pharynx, oral, and nasal cavities. So if we just isolate it to the head and neck for the uh, resonators, we have the uh, superior portion of the larynx, so the area above the vocal folds or supraglottic area. We have the pharyngeal cavity, and in this picture you'll see the posterior pharyngeal wall as well as one lateral or side of the pharyngeal walls, but know that it kind of creates a U-shape on the back of the throat and the sides of the throat. We have the oral cavity here, and we modify the shape of the oral cavity by changing the shape of the tongue. We have the nasal cavity, and we don't change the shape of the nasal cavity, but we can direct airflow through the nasal cavity or sound through the nasal cavity by opening and closing the velum. So the structure that we're really going to focus on in this class is the velum and the pharynx that creates the velopharyngeal port. So during resonation to direct airflow or sound through uh, into the nasal cavity, we have the back and sides of the pharyngeal walls that squeeze together towards midline or uh, towards the middle. And that gives our side and back of our velopharyngeal closure. We have the velum that at rest is open and resting low against the tongue. During speech and swallowing, we have the nasal side of the velum here that's going to lift and uh, go backwards towards the back of the pharynx in a knee-like action. And then uh, that's going to seal off the nasal cavity. So we really have four sides if you think about it. We have the back and the left and right side for the pharynx, and then the front of that velopharyngeal port uh, created by the velum. So our velum also has an additional role during hearing where it's going to open the eustachian tubes, and we'll talk about that in the hearing lecture. That maintains the fluid balance behind the eardrum. So if you feel like you ever have kind of fluid in your ears or your ears feel a little bit fuzzy and you swallow uh, hard, or if you're flying in an airplane and you need to pop your ears, when you swallow you're actually using your velum to open up the eustachian tubes and create that balance again uh, in the middle ear so that you don't have that change in pressure. There's an additional structure called passivance ridge, and it's a muscle bulge just underneath the area of the adenoids, and the adenoids are found uh, on the back portion of the pharynx. Um, and it's not always present, but it is in some people, so it's not required for velopharyngeal uh, closure, but you may see it on some of the videos that we look at, or you might see it in the future, but just know that it is an additional uh, muscle on the back of the pharynx. So what does that look like during movement? Uh, we have the tongue shaping the speech sounds, and that also provides a sense of uh, oral resonance. But what we're really focusing on, again, is that velopharyngeal port. So this is the velum here. We have the oral side on this side that's going to touch the tongue. And we also have the nasal side that has a muscle bulge that's going to give us the knee-like action. So you'll see this kind of go up and down during this speech and it's bulging against that posterior pharyngeal wall, and you'll see very little movement of this posterior pharyngeal wall, um, but know that there is movement there, and there's also movement of the sides of the pharynx. So how do we achieve that closure? We have multiple muscles responsible for the movements of the velum. We have the tensor veli palatini, which is this sling back here in the back of the mouth. We have the uh, levator veli palatini, which creates the top arch, of the velum, and that's really kind of what you're seeing when you open your mouth, that arch is the levator veli palatini, and we have the palatopharyngus muscle, which is uh, the 
posterior fascial pillars. So this is a fascial pillar here. It sits behind your tonsil on either side. If you don't have tonsils, you'll still see this fascial pillar. And then we have the uh, palatal glossus, which creates the anterior or front fascial pillar that sits in front of the tonsils. We also have the musculus uvulae, um, and what you actually see is just a little extra portion of the musculus uvulae. So this is the uvula here when you're opening the mouth, but know that there is also a muscle uh, that we'll dive into in just a minute that attaches to this uh, uvula. And then again we have the pharynx, so when you're looking in the, the mouth you'll see the uh, back of the pharyngeal wall. Um, and what we're really looking for when we look in a mouth is how this area of the mouth lifts during speech. Again, we're not going to see whether or not um, we have adequate closure of the velopharynx, but we can at least see if the velum is moving uh, while we're looking in the mouth. Because if it's not moving on the oral side, it can be a good indication that it's not moving on the nasal side. So the tensor veli palatini isn't really responsible for uh, velopharyngeal closure, um, but it is helpful for opening the eustachian tubes. So it flattens the soft palate um, on the nasal side, uh, pulling it down, and that squeezes and uh, pulls open the eustachian tubes. And it's the only velar muscle innervated by cranial nerve 5. Everything else is innervated by the vagus nerve. The most important muscle for velopharyngeal closure is the levator veli palatini, and it brings the velum up and back on the nasal portion of the velum. And you can remember that because an elevator goes up and down. So we have the levator that brings that velum up and back. Then we have the pallidopharyngus that brings the velum down, and the pallidopharyngus attaches to the soft palate and the sides of the pharynx. So it's really responsible for narrowing the pharynx and pulling the velum down on the nasal side and a little bit on the oral side, um, but it's not necessarily for lifting and closing on that velopharyngeal port. Then we have the palatoglossus. It attaches here in the front from the palate to the sides of the tongue, so it doesn't actually connect right here on the side of the tongue. It goes a little bit further down. and. Um, it's responsible for also bringing the velum down. It's what's really helping seal when we're swallowing the uh, nasal or the uh, oral cavity to keep food from coming back up. And then we have the musculus uvulae that helps with the velopharyngeal closure. It's going to give us a little bit of bulge on that nasal side. So this is what it looks like if we take all of the mucosa away. We have the levator veli palatini, the lifter and closer here that creates a sling. And it's going to lift and pull from these sides of the uh, muscle. We have the musculus uvulae here that attaches or creates the uvula that we see on the oral side of the uh, velum. But it, you can see it also is just a very long muscle that attaches to the levator veli palatini, and it's going to help create the bulge that we'll see uh, in future images. We have the tensor veli palatini that's again for the eustachian tube opening and closing, so it tenses to help pull that eustachian tube open. We have the palatopharyngus that you can now see attaches to the palate and the sides of the pharynx that's going to help pull that velum down. And we have the palatoglossus, again this is the front, and it attaches to the palate and the sides of the tongue here uh, and more of the floor of the mouth. And that's also responsible for pulling that velum down. And these two muscles really work more towards sealing off that oral cavity during swallowing, um, but can also help create a little bit of that bulge that we need for the pharyngeal size of the velopharyngeal port. When we're talking about the pharyngeal muscles, remember we can divide the pharynx into different components. We have the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the hypopharynx. And what we're really focusing on for velopharyngeal closure is the nasopharynx. And we have the sides of the pharynx and the back of the pharynx that help create that uh, back and side portion of the velopharyngeal port. And it works with the levator veli palatini lifting and closing. So what's that look like in real life? This is a picture of endoscopy. When we go through the nose, we take a camera through the one of the nostrils, just straight back through the nose, um, looking at the top portion of the velopharyngeal port. So we have the velum here, 
we have the sides of the pharynx or the lateral pharyngeal wall here and here, and we have the posterior pharyngeal wall in the back. And then the same person, if we are closing that velopharyngeal port, we see the bulge of the velum that's created by the levator veli palatini and the musculus uvulae, the lateral pharyngeal walls here on either side, and the posterior pharyngeal walls. And you can really see that sphincter in this picture. Now this person looks like they have more of a circular closure. We have that bulge of the lateral sides and the posterior pharyngeal wall. But there's actually multiple ways that you can close the velopharynx. The most typical way is just the velum squeezing to the posterior pharyngeal wall. You can also have just lateral pharyngeal wall closure with very little um, velar movement. Or you can have the lateral pharyngeal walls and the velum squeezing together to create that port. Or this is the circular where we have the squeeze from the velum, the squeeze from the lateral pharyngeal walls, and the squeeze from the posterior pharyngeal wall. So now let's look at what that looks like during speech in a real person. So here we have the velum. And it really creates just this uh, whole portion here on the side. And it's just the angle of the camera is a little bit different from that picture you saw just a minute ago. We have the posterior pharyngeal wall over here and over here. And then what you really see is this posterior pharyngeal wall uh, against the back. And that's squeezing shut to keep that sound in the oral cavity, not going into the nasal cavity. And if you hold your breath, we get the same kind of movement that keeps any leakage from the uh, in, a, of air into the nasal cavity. And now we'll listen to some sentences where we'll see that movement of the velum coming up and back in that squeeze, in that coordination of speech, and that's directing that airflow or that sound either into the oral cavity or the nasal cavity appropriately. Hit the hammer hard. How hard did he hit him? Susie sees the seashore. 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65. So we saw that closure during his oral productions because 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65 are all oral productions. And we saw that velopharyngeal port open while he was taking a breath. 